In this video, we're going to discuss the financial statement effects of reversing a deferred tax asset valuation allowance. So if you remember, a deferred tax asset valuation allowance is set up when the company has a situation where they've had some losses or something like that that's creating a deferred tax asset. They believe it's going to reduce their taxable income in the future. However, they think, you know what, we're not going to be profitable in the near future, and so we're not going to be able to use those deferred tax assets. So they set up a valuation allowance to reduce effectively the deferred tax assets. So the valuation allowance is knitted against the deferred tax assets on the balance sheet. So it's going to reduce assets. So when we recognize the allowance initially, it's going to increase income tax expense and it's going to decrease net income. So when we reverse the allowance, it's going to have the opposite effect. So if we have already recognized a valuation allowance for $300,000, and then we reverse that entire allowance, what that's going to do is it's going to reduce our income tax expense in that period in which we have that reversal, and it's going to increase our net income. So this year, if you know some firm that has a valuation allowance of $300,000 and it reverses the entire thing and says, you know what, our outlook for the future is looking better, that's going to boost their profits by $300,000. And, and they don't have to reverse the entire thing. They can reverse a portion of it. Some firms will actually use this as a tool of earnings management. They'll say, okay, this year we'll reverse $100,000 of that $300,000, give us a little boost of $100,000 to our net income, and we'll save the $200,000 for the future, kind of like cookie jar reserves. So I want to show you the journal entries and kind of how this would play out. And this would be good review for you too if, if you just are still a little uncertain about how deferred tax asset valuation allowances work. So let's say there's a company. So we've got four years of financial data. So we've got their income or loss for four years. So they have 500000 in, in 2019. And then they have 150000 50000 and then a $700,000 loss in 2022 in, in year four of our little four-year financial data table. Okay, Each year, they're going to face a tax rate of 40%. So, for example, in 2019, they have 500000 of income, 40% tax rate, so they pay $200,000. So this, this tax paid is just this column, the income or loss, times the tax rate of 40%. Okay, so with this seven hundred thousand dollars, at least in the United States, here's how it works: you can carry you can carry a loss back two years, you can go back two or forward twenty. At least that's the current tax rules. That could change. We're currently uh, discussing tax reform, but we go back two years, forward twenty. So let's just assume that that that's the situation here. That this company has the opportunity to carry uh, the the seven hundred thousand in losses back two years. So they would be able to offset this 200,000 of income, right? They could offset this 50 and this 150. They can't go back to the 500 because that's three years ago. So they offset this, this taxable income and so they're gonna get a refund, a tax refund of $80,000. So we, our journal entry, we debit tax refund receivable uh, and then credit income tax expense. So that's gonna reduce tax expense in the current period. Okay, so that's basically going to make our loss smaller. Our $700,000 loss isn't going to be as big because we're, we're, we're going to have this reduction in, in tax expense. And we'll actually call that income tax benefit. Now, the remaining $500,000, because we have $200,000 here that we carried back of that $700,000, but $700,000 minus $200,000 is $500,000. We get to carry that forward to offset future taxable income. So we're going to debit deferred tax asset for $200,000. Okay, and that 200,000, you might say, why 200,000? Why not 500? Because remember, we're multiplying by the tax rate, and we're going to assume the future tax rate will be 40%. So 40% of 500,000 in losses is really going to have a benefit to us of $200,000, right? Because the tax deduction in the future of 500,000 is really going to give us $200,000 cash, okay? And then we're going to credit income tax expense for $200,000. Normally, if we had no valuation allowance then, we'd say, oh, well, we have income tax expense credited twice for 80000 and 200000 So then our loss, we'd have 700000 but then we'd have an income tax benefit of $280,000. So our net loss would be a lot smaller. However, management believes it's not going to be able to use all these losses. And so they set up a valuation allowance account to reduce the deferred tax asset, credit valuation allowance for 200000 
and a debit income tax expense for 200000 So that basically wipes out this deferred tax asset. It'll still be on the balance sheet, but it'll be netted against his valuation allowance. So 200000 against 200000 is zero. And you notice the income tax expense is debited before it was credited. So it's as if there's there's no effect at all because we're saying hey we're, we're not we don't think we're going to get this uh, loss carry forward so here's what the income statement would look like we had our operating loss of seven hundred thousand the income tax benefit of eighty thousand makes our net loss smaller than the operating loss okay and then this eighty thousand remember that was from the carry back okay we didn't get this two hundred thousand otherwise this would be 280 but we didn't get that because we we set up this deferred tax asset valuation allowance okay now I want to show you the reversal. Let's say that next year the company has operating income. They have a profit of $900,000. And so management says, wow, uh, things are looking a lot better than what we thought they were. So we're going to reverse the entire allowance uh, of $200,000. So they're going to reverse that. So we're going to need to make a couple journal entries. One is going to be just a normal entry of, well, we had 900000 in profit. So we multiply that by 40%. Let's assume that's the same tax rate. 900000 times 40%. We have income tax expense of 360000 Income tax payable of 360000 Now we have to do a reversal of that valuation allowance, though, right? So now we debit the valuation allowance for $200,000. We credit the income tax expense for two hundred thousand dollars so we're basically just doing a reversing entry for what we did to recognize the valuation allowance initially and so here's how our income statement will look we'll have an operating income of nine hundred thousand but then our income tax expense it was this 360 we had a debit but we had the credit of two hundred thousand from the reversal so the income tax expense is debited for 160 so that's going to be it's an expense so it'll reduce We'll, we'll deduct it from operating income to get net income of $740,000. So the bottom line is, by doing this reversal, if we had not set up the deferred tax asset valuation allowance to begin with, then we would have $360,000 of tax expense here, okay? So that so that then we'd have, what would it be, $540,000 of net income instead of seven forty. dollars so by setting up the valuation allowance and then later reversing it the next year, what we did was we had a bigger loss last year than we would have had we not set up the valuation allowance. But this year, we had higher net income than had we not done all that, right? And in case you're wondering, by the way, what if the firm had not had a profit at all this year? What if their operating income was just zero? What if it had just been zero? Could they still turn around and say, we want to reverse uh, the valuation allowance? And the answer is yes. If they ever believe the outlook is more positive and they're going to be able to re reuse those tax losses, they can reverse either the entire allowance or a part of it. They can release, re uh, release a little bit you know, each year. And so again, that's why this is a, a common tool of earnings management for, for managers because they can go and say, all right, well, we had a big loss this year, but we're going to set up a deferred tax asset valuation allowance. And then in future periods, we can release maybe a little bit of that allowance just to hit our earnings target. Or, you know, they could re release the entire thing. It's, it's really subject to managerial discretion. And, and so it's something you really need to watch for when you're evaluating financial statements.